Your class may have been buffed, it may have been nerfed, and Battle for Ashenville has been completely reworked multiple times to try to make it a little bit better. On top of that, Reddit seems to be still on fire about what is public enemy number one. Is it gold buyers? Is it bots? Is it hunter pets? Or is it layering? Well, we're gonna find out here today on Last Week Tonight in World of Warcraft with me, your host, Sarth, discussing everything that happened in WoW last week. Because in WoW Classic, there was quite a few changes where blue posts would come out hours after each other changing one thing and then reverting it and so on and so forth so i'm going to try to summarize everything for you here today so in case you didn't have the chance to read every single post that's out there or didn't have the chance to see every single video that's out there we can sum it all up for you right now first of all congratulations are in order for the only things guild that has been able to clear hardcore molten core with zero deaths and whether you think it was too easy it's still something that's impressive for players that haven't played much world of warcraft nonetheless and back to season of discovery the battle for Asheville has seen multiple changes this week actually completely changing the way this entire game mode is experience. No longer do you have to be one of the first 40 people to tag the enemy boss or the enemy lieutenant. Now everybody who does get a hostile action off will get reputation and that reputation has gone up significantly. There was a hotfix that went in that made Battle for Ashenville not occur until about like eight hours on each server. That has been rescinded and it is a lot faster for you to actually proceed to have Battle for Ashenville. It's still not nearly as often as we used to have it, but it is one major event now, which does also have multiple layers because Blizzard had started retiring the layers, but it made it seem like the actual open world was completely dead. You would never run into another player, so this is a a nice change they very quickly within the same day on Saturday night at like 10 p.m. over for Blizzard time, they were able to revert that change and make the world feel open again. As for the botting issue, it's as bad as the lighting behind me. Bots are everywhere in Season of Discovery, and this is probably one of the things that they absolutely need to deal with as soon as possible before things get out of hand. Gold buyers are already being banned, gold sellers are hopefully also being banned, but bots are everywhere in the open world, and you probably have run into them while you're leveling your ult, so this is probably, in my opinion, public enemy number one, although Reddit may tell you differently that the public enemy is still Hunter Pets. And as for class tuning, hunters have seen the most tuning this week, having their pets be scaled down, specifically the Scorpid pets. Scorpid pets were actually able to 1v3 certain people and they were extremely overtuned. They have been now nerfed to the ground where hunters are now either using wind serpents or cats. Hunters did figure out a way to make wind serpents the most powerful pets in the game very quickly and very briefly for a few hours before Blizzard went in and nerfed the kill command rune to no longer work with wind serpents. So if you are using a wind serpent and you are a hunter, make sure to use any other rune in that slot. And hunters weren't the only classes that saw tuning this week. Whereas melee seems extremely powerful and warriors are are doing leaps and bounds of the DPS of every other class, followed slightly by rogues and then hunters and feral druids, all casters needed a little bit of a bump. Therefore, within the raid itself, all of the inherent resistances that all of the bosses had for like some reason that makes no sense, that was reduced. Some of it was deleted completely, but most of it was reduced from like 75 magic resistance to 25. I have no idea why this is in the game. It's a very weird mechanic for them to build in and all casters need a little bit of help. So the boon of the Black Fathom, the actual world buff we have available to us right now has also been increased to give casters a 25 spell damage buff as well as 3% spell hit, something they absolutely needed because spell hit is very significant. Even though the bosses within BFD are only two levels ahead of you, casters have been a little bit lackluster. Now for some of the other class changes, druids. Druids have seen a massive buff to the damage and a reduction of the mana cost of the Star Surge ability. And this buff turns out to almost double the DPS coming from Boomkins. The Star Surge ability is now extremely, extremely strong. It is almost overtuned, but it is very, very good. This was a very nice change. Hunters had a little bit of a buff coming to their flanking strike ability, which now also applies from their attack power or gets benefits from their attack power, but it still is one of the weakest runes that they have 
for them. And additionally, hunter pets and their performance is still being adjusted, but it looks like hunters are going to be having pets that scale with the hunter themselves, meaning pets at higher levels will be a lot better because they usually in classic World of Warcraft are stronger at lower levels and then become extremely weak as you get to the higher levels. This is a nice quality of life change for hunters, which could be very good. Priests also had some of their damage increase significantly, where their Void Plague ability did have its damage increased by 200%. And Priests' other two main abilities, Homunculi and Twisted Faith, also had massive buffs. Homunculi now do 100% more damage, and Twisted Faith now increases the damage done by Mind Blast and Mind Flay by 50% instead of 20% as it was before. Now the issue here is Priests are still maxing out at like 70 to 90 damage. DPS, where warriors can do 300 plus DPS on every single fight. Shadow Priests are in some much need of some love, and they obviously will get some of that moving into phase two, but even with the level 40 cap, it seems like Shadow Priest needs kind of a little bit more tuning, which we're definitely seeing a lot of class tuning, so hopefully they will be a lot stronger next. Phase. And rogues had some buffs and tuning to their saber slash ability, where the saber slash ability now can also proc remorseless attacks. This is the talent that makes your next attack basically almost always crit. And saber slash is now actively counting as a bleed, meaning it will now acquire the plus 30% extra damage from the mangle debuff from your feral druids. Now, saber slash did have its tooltip fixed where the tooltip was originally saying it was doing 130% weapon damage. Instead, it now says 100% weapon damage. This is a tooltip fix because it was always actively in the game acting the same way. So you'll see no actual change in the damage of this ability other than the 30% additional damage to the bleed effects from Mangle. Who will shamans got some love. The Lava Lash ability had its mana cost reduced as well as the damage increased to 150% weapon damage. Lava Lash is still one of the weaker abilities in the game and it would be lovely to see a little bit of a rework here, but they also had the overload ability which makes it so that any of your casts also cast a double cast so a lightning bolt would literally instantly cast another lightning bolt was increased of the chance of this happening from 33% to 50% so instead of one third of your abilities it is now every other ability on average this also affects some heals so this was a buff to resto shamans and elemental shamans this is a much needed buff as well as the dual wield specialization also gives you 10% extra hit which is very nice they are pretty much juiced up on the hit where they won't miss a lot of their abilities including spell abilities this is something that most people might not have noticed but there has been a rework of almost all hit gear in the game where most of the gear that gives you plus hit rating is no longer specifically plus melee hit rating or plus spell hit rating we're generally seeing everything be universal as just giving you one percent chance to hit this is a very nice change and will add up significantly as we move forward into the later phases. As for some more class buffs, mage healing has been increased, allowing mages to actually benefit from the heals of or arcane damage of their wands. So if you have an arcane wand, it will be applied to your temporal beacon and therefore applied to healing. So instead of going oom um as a mage, you can still heal as a mage just using your wand. And they also made it so that mass regeneration and regeneration do actually take up or consume arcane blast procs. This is something that just wasn't happening earlier on, and it is just a normal fix. The healing rain ability for shamans has also seen some tuning where it'll no longer reset your auto attack swing timer as the heals are going off. And living flame will now cease to deal damage if you no longer have that rune. Mages were doing some things where they would snapshot runes, equipping one piece of gear that had a rune, using an ability, and then switching the gear out and getting full use out of that. It is something that I think every class should probably look into trying things, but Blizzard is gonna be pretty attentive at nerfing it. So be aware that snapshotting with runes and switching your gear is no longer gonna be available. This also saw a little bit of a nerf to rogues who were able to shadow step and actually use a macro to auto swap their runes before they hit the target. This also seems to have been fixed or adjusted, so just know you won't be able to do that anymore. And in some exciting news, the frustration of not being able to turn in your weekly quest 
for the battle drums from Asheville for the 5% buff. This has been fixed or mitigated completely. You used to have to run to your team's or your side's base during one of the events, missing out on a ton of reputation during that one singular event. Now the faction leaders are in your main city, so you can turn in that quest whenever you want. Whenever the event is not happening, you can now turn in that quest. And this is a really nice quality of life change, which on top of that leads us to other quality of life changes that are happening this week. Reputations that required us to be honored for reputations to be able to get things like our runes has been reduced to friendly. So the waylaid supplies has been reduced to friendly for your runes. And we've also seen greatly increased drop rates of the higher level waylaid supplies. So those crates you need to get, I believe they're still unique, annoyingly, unless they're filled. Hopefully they kind of work around that and just make them not unique. Like, why are they unique? It's, I, it's you know what? It's classic World of Warcraft and that's, that's, that's all, I'll take that over having a billion bots. So actually spend your time on the bots if you have the chance. Anyways, the actual price of the runes themselves was also reduced. So if you're buying any of the runes, any of those very hard farms, all of those have been reduced. Every type of rune is getting easier to get if there is a massive barrier to entry that is a lot harder for you to get it. On that note, the Ashenville mount that allows you to move 50% faster is also available to players now at friendly instead of honored, which is a very nice change. It makes it a lot easier for you to get that mount very quickly and keep up with other players. And the Darkmoon Fair is back in Elwyn Forest. We have twice the frequency of Darkmoon Fairs where it used to be just once a month just in the Horde or Alliance zones alternating. Now it is going to be here twice a month. So every other week we will have access to that 10% buff from the Darkmoon Fair. Little known tip, make sure you are getting your 14 slot bags from this as well as make sure you are trying to get some of those scrolls because the scrolls are your best consumables and hunters can use scrolls on their pets and they're, they sell for a lot. You can make a lot of gold but they're camped out by bots. But from there, guys, that is a full roundup of everything that happened this week. All of the changes within World of Warcraft Classic, which was quite a few. This was much longer than I anticipated this video to be. And of course, as changes happen, I will always try to keep you updated instantly. But whenever a week ends, I'll try to sum everything up in a video like this for you. Thanks for watching, guys. And of course, thank you for all of the support of the YouTube members. I'll see you over there on Twitch as well as on the next video.